Dave Chappelle refuses to be silenced. Let's see, dude. Netflix did him dirty, by the way. Cat Williams talked about it on a podcast as well. Anytime you want to play. Good comedians will make you laugh. The best comedians will make you laugh at things you are not supposed to laugh at. Iconic comedians will transcend the punchlines, challenge societal norms, transgress established boundaries, and continue to share their thoughts despite an uproar of negative criticism. Dave Chappelle is an iconic comedian, but he did not get there easily. There have been numerous attempts to silence Dave, whether it was a heckler, an angry journalist, or a multi-billion dollar organization, but Dave was never willing to compromise his integrity. Not for one man, not for one dollar. His big break in Hollywood was when Universal Pictures bought a movie Dave and Neil Brennan wrote called Half-Baked. It's a silly stoner comedy okay. reminiscent of Jay and Silent Bob that wasn't a huge hit. But the movie did gross $17 million against a $7 million budget and has become a cult classic since. 24-year-old Dave wasn't fully happy with the way the film came out, but he was extremely proud mm -hmm. to have his movie on the big screen at such a young age. From there, he started pitching a television show to various networks. Fox was interested did, but they worried the show casted too many black people. More specifically, they thought the female- And you think, you think America isn't racist? Mm hmm? Go on now. Go on now. You better move the fuck out the way. Female star of the show wasn't funny, and they wanted Dave to recast her to a white actress. Listen, there's only like one fucking huge comedian icon at a time, bro. A huge black comedian at a time, bro. You got fucking like, right, right now it's Kevin Hart, right? But then we had like, what, Cat Williams, Dave Chappelle, fucking uh, Bernie Mac, fucking, like it just goes down a lot. Like only one at a time, bro. We only get one shit. Yeah, bro. No, chat. This is deep. This is deep. They And you're chosen. You understand? You're choosing. They're like, all right, motherfucker, it's your time. Yeah. I didn't know that. Nah, bro. I'm trying to tell you, chat. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Chris Rock. Yes, bro. First, first of all, I got to say Chris Rock. Chris Rock. That's special. I don't know if fucking, uh, what's his name? Will Smith smacked the jokes out that motherfucker. He smacked the humor out that motherfucker because he was not funny during that whole special at all. Not funny. I'm sorry. What? I said what I said. I didn't laugh once at that fucking special when he came back. I was waiting for the joke. That shit was like an hour and a half, bro. I was fucking crickets, dude. Me either. No, it was bad. It was so bad. I tweeted about it. I don't even tweet about shit. When the fuck do I tweet? Corny ass Chris Rock. Yeah, it was corny. He's like, he's like, this is. And I seen a, a PB and J, and I said, what the heck, PB and J? <laughs> like, come on, bro. Fuck him. Respectfully, weak ass fucking set. Sorry. Dave simply denied because this particular sitcom was based on his life, and he grew up in an all black household. A few days after that meeting, Variety posted an article that claimed he was playing the race card. Dave said. This network built itself on black viewers, and what they're saying is white people are narcissistic. They don't want to watch black people. They want to watch themselves. It tells every black artist, no matter what you do, you need whites to succeed. Fox claims they were making a light suggestion to hashtag fucking whitewash myself, hashtag got the bag, hashtag kind of proved them right. What the fuck is happening? Add a different perspective, a point of view that allows a larger audience to appreciate it. Most young people in the industry would just accept the request of a major corporation, but Dave was unashamed of his decision and was willing to tell the world exactly how he felt. I felt like I was beaten up and completely degraded, he said. It's disgusting and it made me want to vomit. It pretty much took Dave one bad experience to know this whole Hollywood thing is overrated. To make matters worse, his father was on his deathbed. While traveling Damn. back and forth from LA to Ohio, he realized how much he loved the small town of Yellow Springs. He describes it as something so real in contrast to Hollywood's powerful illusion. Dave purchased a farm out in the town with 3,000 people because he can focus on his family and friends. He can have real genuine interactions with people who aren't trying to gain something from him. Sadly, his father passed away at the young age of 59. William David Chappelle III was a veteran, college professor, and an organizer in the civil rights movement in RIP, Ohio. Bro. Although young Dave lost the man he would go to for all of his advice, he knew that his father would want him to stand up and speak out for what he thought was right. Dave was not going to let anyone walk all over him because Comedy Central was about to try their best at controlling him. Dave was convinced that after his father had passed, he was done with the show business and he was just going to do stand up. His first hour-long comedy special, Killing Them Softly, released on HBO, and many consider this to be one of the best stand-up specials of all time. <laughs> People knew Dave was a generational talent. He knew it. He could not give up on this dream. He started writing a variety show with various skits and sketches that were personal and relatable to the common man. He knew he had something big, and after a few years in 2003, he decided to pitch a new show titled 
The Chappelle Show, mm -hmm. which got picked up by Comedy Central for two seasons. The Chappelle Show is regarded by many as the greatest sketch comedy show in history. Dave would open the show performing stand-up to a live audience and then shift the joke into a pre-recorded sketch. All of his bits were rooted in a great deal of irony, basically conveying the exact opposite of what you would expect. Like this employee training video that teaches you exactly how to get fired. Getting to work. First of all, never show up on time. He created characters that would earn diehard fan bases, like Tyrone Biggums, mm -hmm. who was, well, pretty much just a crackhead. Or Clayton Bigsby, the world's only black white supremacist. Mm -hmm. Due to his blindness, mm -hmm. he didn't know that he was actually black. Sometimes his characters were just over-exaggerated versions of real people, like Lil Jon or Rick James. I'm Rick James. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> Edgy isn't even a good enough word to describe Dave's humor. He was way over the edge with some of these bits. The most shocking of them all was perhaps the Hard R family, a rich suburban white family whose last name is the racial slur. Morning, niggas! Why, it's custard on a colored milk family. And it's my favorite family to deliver milk to. The niggas! <laughs> <laughs> the very first episode of Chappelle's show tackled an extremely risky subject, basically becoming a mission statement for the program. If you don't like this, you won't like anything else. Something like The Chappelle Show will never air on TV ever again. But at the time, You can't people... even air that bitch on fucking YouTube, bro. Shit would get demonetized, 18 plus restricted, shadow banned, pushed to the fucking corner of the internet, dude. Loved it. Now, even in 2004, the mainstream media was against shocking, vulgar, and risky entertainment. But they had a little tolerance. The solution back then was put it on after hours, like after 9 p.m. when the kids are asleep. Mm -hmm. The Chappelle Show averaged 3.1 million viewers Damn. per episode in 2004, just shy of Saturday Night Live's 3.7 million. However, Dave's impact on culture at that time far exceeded SNL. He was a superstar comedian at a time where comedy was missing superstars. Dave's show saved Comedy Central from failing and made them a ton of money. Chappelle Show Season 2 Uncensored has broken both the first day and seven day sales records for TV on DVD, with close to 500,000 units sold on its May May 24th release date and more than 1.2 million units sold in its first week out in the Bro, I remember watching some type of interview where it's like he made so much money that like the contract was void and then they gave him only like 5%. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was on like a Cat Williams interview. I swear to God it was. You know what I mean? Like he made him what 50 million and he only got like five, some shit like that, bro. In the market. Chappelle Show Season 1 Uncensored released last year is the best selling TV on DVD title with close to 3 million copies sold. Because of the first two seasons' undeniable success, Comedy Central offered Dave a whopping $50 million for a new season, but mm. instead, he walked away. Like many people who are new to the entertainment industry, Dave signed a contract that he didn't fully understand. Of course he hired a lawyer, but ultimately he knew this show was great for his career and he would make good money. What could possibly go wrong? Dave says he never got paid for The Chappelle Show mm. because the contract said Comedy Central didn't have to pay him. This contract also said that they have the exclusive right to use the name and likeness of the artist in perpetuity. Is that not fucked up, chat? Y yo, these contracts should be fucking illegal. Like, this is not. it's crazy. Throughout the universe, in any and all media known or invented in the future, on top of them literally owning him, Dave just straight up didn't like the fame and attention. He just liked comedy. But even that was getting ruined. One night while he was performing in Sacramento, California. And by the way, this isn't just like in fucking Hollywood or whatever the fuck. And this is why I'm so against like fucking uh, the little VTube organization shits and shit like that. You got to be very, very, very careful what the fuck you're signing, all that shit. Like fucking no shots to Niji Sanji or whatever the fuck. I never seen their contract, but how alive Niji Sanji, whatever the fuck. I would rather just get fucking big by myself than sign onto a shitty fucking organization network that doesn't really do shit for you. And then they, you, they take your model, your like everything in their whole brand so when you leave you have absolutely nothing they take everything from you bro it's fucked it's terrible it is dog shit and I, I don't i don't get why people are so like um obsessed with companies he walked off the stage after berating his audience for constantly shouting i'm rick james bit which had become a catchphrase from the popular rick james sketch on his show stand up is the most important thing i do and because i'm on tv you make it hard for me to do it he said. The show is ruining my life, Chappelle told the crowd. Besides requiring him to work 20 hours a day, it has made him a star, which has resulted in the inability of fans to treat him as an individual. So when Comedy Central offered him $50 million, it came with stipulations. 
He Damn. had to get approvals on certain jokes. He didn't have full creative control and they worked him like a- That sounds like some type of agencies, right? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Imagine that shit while just streaming chat. I'm telling you, these fucking piece of shit VTube agencies don't do it. I'm telling you on God, bro. Dog, it wasn't worth the money. So one day he just walked off set and moved to South Africa, desperate to get as far away from Hollywood as possible. In response, Comedy Central ran a smear campaign on him, saying that he was crazy and on drugs. In May 2005, Comedy Central began promoting the anticipated debut of Chappelle's show season three. One day later, the channel announced that the production on the show had been unexpectedly suspended. Then one week later, every news outlet reported that Chappelle had checked into a mental health facility in South Africa, perpetuating the narrative that he was mentally unstable. Some reports said he was even smoking crack. I was freaked out, man, with the fame thing and being called uh, crazy and drug addict and all these things. Uh, scared me you know just being treated that way they bullied the fuck out of him like i'm not a person anymore you say this shit about me in front of my children and you know who really like who the fuck do these people think they are and they don't know what happened you know i I know so orgs like this, uh, but if I speak, I'll get in trouble. Bro, I'm trying to tell, like, chat, I'm trying to tell you. $50 million deal was one of the most profound statements in pop culture history. He was already mega famous, but ironically, this exit made him even more famous. One 2006 article said, These days, if Dave Chappelle merely catches a cold, it winds up in the media or on the internet. He fired back, saying he was not on drugs and he was not crazy. In fact, he was the most level-headed person out there, denying money for his sanity. I'm not in a mental facility. Everyone around me says, you're a genius, you're great, that's your voice. But I'm not sure they're right. You hear so many voices jockeying for position in your mind that you want to make sure you hear your own voice. So I figured, let me just cut myself off from everybody. Take a minute and pull a Flintstone. Stop a speeding car by using my bare feet as the brakes. Hollywood just couldn't fathom that someone who became famous would choose to abandon that lifestyle. He did make a short reappearance at the 48th Grammy Awards where he received a standing ovation. Right in front of the entire industry, Dave told them how he didn't want to be there. The only thing harder than leaving show business is coming back. <laughs> Later that evening, he went to an after party held at the home of the legendary artist Prince. Instead of talking to Mariah Carey, Common, or industry powerhouses, he sat in a chair on the back patio, only conversing with people who wanted to. He, he just wants to be a dude, bro. Hold on, I want to show you this real quick. This is Cat Williams talks about this. He talked about this fucking nine years ago, dude. Holy shit. But <laughs> hell, you, you got to watch this full interview chat. It's fire. Oh God, it, it shows a lot about the industry, but it literally transcends just like that industry. It's just everything as a whole, bro. I'm telling you, it's very eye-opening. It's very insightful. Please watch if, you, if you're interested in that stuff. Looks like he is hiding from his peers, hiding from the attention, hiding from the part of himself that is a major star. Dave said, this ain't really my thing. After that night, Dave realized it was time to disappear, and he did just that. And nobody really heard from him for many years. What did you do for those 10 years? It was a humble existence. I had had young children. I was raising my kids. I was living a suburban life. And then every once in a while, I get this feeling like I'm the funniest guy. I got to get out there. And I would <laughs> like fly to Denver, do a week in Denver or something. And, and that's when you would read I was doing like these six hour shows. I performed like I was desperate for it. I, lo I loved it. Yeah. He rode across the country on a motorcycle, focused on raising his children, mm. maintained good standing relationships with his friends. He lived an extremely normal life, just like me and most of you watching this video. Dave would only make selective appearances from 2005 to 2016. He had a few random stand-up performances here and there. One of them even broke a world record. A six hour and seven minute set at the Laugh Factory became the longest comedic performance in history. He performed at the Oddball Comedy Tour in 2013, a goat, bro. doing large arenas around the country. In Hartford, Connecticut, he was booed and heckled during his entire set. Until he left the stage saying this crowd was the worst one he had seen in his whole life. This bomb made Dave realize he was rusty and he needed to get back to being funny again. Mm -hmm. So in 2014, he made a grand comeback by headlining 10 nights at New York City's iconic Radio City Music Hall. The buzz surrounding his return grew as he was interviewed on various late night talk shows. Dave rocked the sold out crowds every single night, selling over 60,000 tickets in total. Damn. These unforgettable shows marked his official return to the spotlight after his prolonged absence. Dave achieved a legendary status just from his Comedy Central show and one stand up special. The comedy community as a whole was honored to have him back. Oh, brother. He hosted Saturday Night Live during election weekend when Trump won in 2016. 
Donald Trump, he did it. He's, he's our president. I feel bad saying it. I'm staying in a Trump hotel right now. <laughs> I don't know if he's going to make a good president, but he makes a swell hotel suite. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> housekeeping comes in in the morning and cleans my room, and I just, hey, good morning, housekeeping. Grab a big handful of pussy and say, you know. <laughs> Ball said it was okay. <laughs> Citizens feared that the new president was going to destroy this country. Dave was skeptical, but ended his monologue with this message. I'm wishing Donald Trump luck, and I'm going to give him a chance. And we, the historically disenfranchised, demand that he give us one too. Thank you very much. Netflix announced that they would be hosting Dave for three specials, in which he would be receiving $20 million for each one. In a Damn. way, this can be seen as making up for the trouble he went through with Comedy Central. The Age of Spin was released on Netflix in 2017 and was met with good reviews. Months later, while headlining at Radio City Music Hall, he made multiple jokes about the transgender community. One in specific talks about Trump banning trans people from serving in the US military, in which Dave pokes fun and says that ISIS would be horrified to see trans women storming at them. Chappelle says he doesn't understand trans people but doesn't think that disqualifies them from being a human being that deserves a life with dignity and happiness and respect. He ended by arguing that sometimes he thinks the only reason all of us are talking about transgenders is because white men want to do it. If it was just black That is the craziest quote I've ever heard, bro. It explained. I need context. What's going on here? People and Mexicans like, hey y'all, we feel like girls inside. They'd be like, shut up, no one asked you how you felt. Dave <laughs> wait, wait, what? Hold on, hold on, go back, go back, go back. He ended by arguing that sometimes he thinks the only reason all of us are talking about transgenders is because white men want to do it. If it was just black people and Mexicans like, hey y'all, we feel like girls inside. They'd be like, shut up, no one asked you how you felt. Dave received a lot of criticism, with many citing that it doesn't matter he is joking because they are rooted in bigotry and overgeneralizations, or they say he shouldn't joke about a topic he is uneducated on. This back and forth just perpetuated more jokes and commentary from Dave. It became a bulk of his material. You know who hates me the most? The transgender community. Despite the controversy, his comeback was receiving all the praise. In 2017, Chappelle received a Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album for his first two specials, The Age of Spin and Deep in the Heart of Texas, and later that year would go on to receive an can she say something? I have words. You're not going to like them, so I'm just going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's your favorite comedian? The motherfucker's funny, dude. I don't give a fuck what you say. He's hilarious. <laughs> Cancel me too. Oh, no. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? <laughs> if I... Uh, it's, it's fucking... What's, what's fucked up is... I'm sorry. You can, Oh, it's so offensive. Motherfucker, if I went to my fucking mom right now, okay? Motherfucker, I'm not... Oh, motherfucker, Hispanic and black. If I go to my mom right now and say, I feel like a girl... She's going to, like, laugh at my face, bro. Okay? I'm sorry. It's just... It's the truth i know in your world it's not you be like oh my god it's so fucked up kenji whatever the fuck but if i go to my dad right now dad i don't know man i think i identify as a girl like motherfucker would straight laugh at me he's not wrong you don't gotta like the joke but it's based in truth bro i'm sorry an emmy award and another grammy for outstanding variety special for equanimity he also won the mark twain prize for american humor but it was in 2019 where the backlash reached new heights sticks and stones released on netflix in 2019 and dave didn't hold back on this one. Me Too, gun control, opioid crisis, cancel culture, and of course, the transgender community. He covered every hot button topic in one special. A lot of transphobic, and um, I think it's just different views, bro. It's just, times is changing, different views, you feel me? Like, it's just like, you gotta understand when they were growing up, this was never like a thing. So like, I don't know, it, everything, like society's evolving in a way where I don't think, you know what I mean? My dad, my dad is God's strongest transphobe. Yeah, I'm, I just think it's just times are changing and motherfuckers are, it, Maybe, I wonder if we're gonna get like that, dude. When we get really fucking old, we have kids, you know what I mean? And it's like, listen, motherfucker. When I was fucking, we only fuck with trans. We fuck with, uh, I don't know, cis het males. You know what I mean? Like some crazy shit. And like, what is this new shit y'all doing over here? You know what I mean? Like what we might sound outdated to our fucking kids. You don't know what the fuck. Bro, it's already happening. You don't fucking know, bro. You don't fucking know. Um, oh, it's already in motion. Time and society views change. Yeah, for sure, dude. I'm sure like, bro, fucking give it like 10 years. I'm, like a joke I made fucking a year or two ago is gonna get me canceled and dragged. You know what I mean? Like in the future, you don't fucking know. Sticks and Stones marks a shift. This performance felt way more like a piece of social commentary rather than stand-up comedy, at least in the first half. Now, I think this goes without saying, but comedy is extremely nuanced. Cherry picking clips and bits can often remove the necessary content 
context, that sells a joke. NBC said that cancel culture, how fun? I don't give a fuck about cancel culture. Mm, I know, listen, I know in my heart, I am not a hateful person. I'm not out here spreading hate. You know what I mean? I want everybody to be themselves, be happy with who they are. So I know deep down, like cancel culture, like someone could spread the most craziest, heinous shit about me, bro. You feel me, motherfucker? I'm chilling because I know I treat everybody that I talk to with respect and, and all that shit. You know what I mean? It's nothing but love over here. I don't know, dude. But I don't give a fuck about cancel culture. We got canceled how many times on the channel? Like fucking 13. Motherfucker, dude, you ask some random motherfucker on the internet, they probably think I'm the worst person ever to exist. You can't be canceled if you're a uh, fan base loyal. Thank you, bro. Could you use jokes you said five years ago against? You, so fucking stupid for sure. They did that with um Corey Kenshin, I'm pretty sure. NBC said that today's context-free Twitter culture is preventing Dave from thriving. You're either fighting President Donald I'm fucking these goldfish up, pork. I'm so sorry, bro. Trump or you're a MAGA apologist. You're either believe all women or you're anti-me too. And that black and white world is not one in which Dave Chappelle has ever operated, mm. particularly now. Many people read headlines and tweets and form opinions without actually digesting the material. However, even those who Sound did like fully Twitter. digest the special still were not impressed. Sticks and Stones registers as a temper tantrum, the product of a man who wants it all money, fame, influence, without much having to answer to anyone. Forbes chimed in with, Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones tries too hard to offend. Comedians have always made jokes about current societal standards and political climates. Discussing societal issues mixed in with quips and bits make their performances relatable, but not too serious. Dave and many people in defense of comedy argue that nothing is off limits when it comes to jokes, but opposers pick and choose what is allowed to be joked about. At this point, we're re-entering a familiar- Kinda true, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like if my friend tells like a real, like it could be like the whitest motherfucker next to me, he could say the most racist joke. You know what I mean? It could be the most racist joke towards me. If that shit's funny, like I might just giggle. You know, I'm gonna be mad and shoving be clenching my fist, but ooh, you motherfucker, you made me giggle. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know, dude. I like anything can be joked about. Cycle. Chappelle releases a special on Netflix. He says something incendiary. It's quoted back to him in a headline, and Chappelle reacts to the criticism in another Netflix special. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing. A comedian is not absolved from criticism and critics don't have to think someone is funny. This cycle is a product of free speech, and any sane human understands both sides are allowed and should speak their mind. One person who knows that the most is Dave Chappelle, who boycotted his own show because he felt like it. In 2020, mm. Viacom, the owner of The Chappelle Show, licensed the show to Netflix and HBO Max without providing Dave with any compensation and without making him aware of the deal. He was aware that it was legal in the court of law, as it was stated in the contract he signed during the show's initial negotiations, but he saw the move as unethical. In a video released by Dave titled Unforgiven, he would ask his fans to boycott the show on HBO until he was paid citing the ethical obligations of Viacom to pay him what he was owed. Since he had such a good relationship with Netflix, he was furious they did this to him because of how badly Comedy Central treated him. So you know what I did? I called them and I told them that this makes me feel bad. And do you want to know what they did? They agreed that they would take it off their platform just so I could feel better. Wow. That's why I with Netflix. Dave and his fans praised Netflix for removing the show based on his feelings, That'd but they Netflix. were shocked when members of the trans community tried to get Dave's special removed because he hurt their feelings. The Closer was his 2021 Netflix special where he again made jokes about trans people, as well as anti-gay jokes and defending TERFs. He stated in the special that gender is a fact. In the special's closing moments, he tells a story about his friend Daphne Dorman, who was a trans woman and stand-up comedian, that defended Dave from criticism in his previous special, Sticks and Stones. Punching down requires you to consider yourself superior to another group. Dave Chappelle doesn't consider himself better than me in any way. He isn't punching up or punching down. He's punching lines. That's his job, and he's a master of his craft. Ah, uh, get it? Punch lines. Ah, uh, I got you. What's the term? Dude, I don't fucking know. I'm gonna be honest. I have no idea. Dave claimed that Daphne Dorman received so much hate from her own community that she died by suicide six days after the special. Right-wing media went into a frenzy saying the trans community are hypocrites and will destroy their own people. However, there is little evidence that supports Daphne's expiration has anything to do with hate. Back in 2019, that tweet had just 12 replies. Another tweet 
supporting Chappelle had nine. The Instagram post in which she declared her friendship with Chappelle doesn't have any critical replies. Comments on her Facebook post announcing that she was opening for Chappelle are uniformly positive. So are the ones on Reddit after she posted about it there. She doesn't appear to have said anything on Twitter or Facebook about receiving abuse. Her uh, a TERF is someone pretending to be trans for the status or to make fun of the transgender stereotypes from what I understand. Pretending? How do you pretend to be trans? Huh? That's not true. Oh, is that the wrong definition? The turf is not that. Motherfucker, I'm getting my sources from you, motherfuckers. I'm gonna be honest. I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. Call me. I can explain it. I'm gonna be, I don't care that much, Heavenly, but sure. Okay. I know what it is. Okay. 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 Enlighten us, my friend. All right, I'm only explaining because your chat's dumb and I don't want them running off saying dumb shit. Okay. Not because not of you, because I know you don't really care because you, you know, you cool like that. You chill like that. T-E-R-F, trans exclusionary radical feminist. Basically, they don't believe trans people are women and they hate men. That's it. That's Wait. literally all of this. That's it. They, they hate trans women. They hate men. That's it. Nothing about being trying to be a trans person, none of that. That's that's literally it. Trans exclusionary, excluding trans people. Someone in the chat keeps spamming feminist. queer baiting. That person is lacking IQ. So Ignore it's not them. queer baiting. Just tell them shut the fuck up. Dude, trans do we even know? Does the internet collectively know what the fuck is going on like anymore? What the fuck is happening? No, but that's it. I I want I want to fuck up your reaction. I just wanted to get that out there because I because your chat be. They just be pressure. spouting stupid shit off. They, they just say stupid shit yo. all day, and then I can't tell them shut the fuck up fast enough. This is <laughs> one man versus a thousand, and then somebody <laughs> gonna say something dumb. Everyone's like, yeah, that's right, that's smart, that's smart. And because you don't know, you can't tell them shut the fuck up. So you just like, like that shit be getting me up the fucking wall. Like, I got it this time. We good. <laughs> True, okay, bro. All right, all right, go ahead back to the thing. <laughs> all right, dude. He's uh, it's true, bro. Y'all fucking you motherfuckers, dude. Will literally just spout shit off like his facts and then just fucking dick ride the shit out of it and i'll believe it like a dumbass too leaving me all disinformed dis disinformation disinformation disenfranchised man fuck you bitch i know it doesn't mention bullying nor do any of the obituaries also chat don't be a turf motherfucker okay don't be a trans exclusionary uh rights t turf wait T-E-R. Yeah, don't be that, bitch. I respect for people. Where he's written after her death. Because of this, many people thought Dave was using someone's death to his own benefit, and the trans community were tired of Dave. Netflix employees interpreted the closer as hate speech, and 65 employees participated in a walkout in protest of the company. The protest garnered a lot of support online, However, it was generally unsuccessful because Netflix has stood behind Dave, kept his specials up, and continued to work with him in the future. Then things escalated to physical violence against Dave. Oh shit. Make some noise for hip hop history. Oh shit. Oh shit. Isaiah Lee was the name of the suspect who Damn! He got fucked up. God! Damn, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Yo, look at his face. Later admitted why he attacked the comedian. I identify as bisexual and I wanted him to know what he said was triggering. I wanted him to know that next time he should consider first running his material by people it could affect. Isaiah Lee has huh yo on oh god chat i'm telling you right now if i ever make a fucking joke and, and you feel like it affects you bitch you try to run up on me on oh god you getting caught with a fucking ill mortal combat uppercut um blah, 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 slow motion ah, ah, uppercut, bitch like what are we talking about dude Get the fuck out of here we bisexuals don't claim this this guy mm. eh, stop playing before i suck y'all dick what is y'all talking about has also been charged with attempted murder after stabbing his roommate oh in the last shit. effort to take down dave a Wait, what the fuck? Go back. Holy shit. Isaiah Lee has also been charged with attempted murder after stabbing his roommate. In a last effort to take down Dave, a venue in Minneapolis canceled a sold out show of his hours before the doors were set to open. We believe in diverse voices and the freedom of artistic expression, but in honoring that, we lost sight of the impact this would have. The event was mm -hmm. moved to a smaller venue in the same city and sold out two shows back to back. It seemed like the more backlash Dave got, the more it would ultimately that help his career. The haircut is to close crazy. Dave was nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Variety Special. To close out the year, Dave took the stage on SNL and delivered the show's opening monologue. And yes, he faced even more controversy. Recently, Kanye West had went on an anti-Semitic rant on social media, to which Dave responded with, I denounce anti-Semitism in all its forms. <laughs> and I stand with my friends in the Jewish community. And that, Kanye, is how you buy yourself some time. <laughs> you know, the rules of perception. If, if they're black, then it's a gang. 
If they're Italian, it's a mob, but if they're Jewish, it's a coincidence and you should never speak about it. Despite Dave obviously disagreeing with Kanye, his jokes entertain the possibility that some of what Ye said holds an ounce of truth, which led to even more critics calling Dave anti-Semitic. He ended the monologue with a message. It shouldn't be this scary to talk about anything. It's making my job incredibly difficult. And to be honest with you, I'm getting sick of talking to a crowd like this. I love you to death. And I thank you for your support. That little ass jacket. And I hope they don't take anything away from me. <laughs> Whoever they are. <laughs> Some people think that Dave's legacy has been tainted by hardcore transphobia or trying too hard to be controversial. Even though his comedy has always towed the line as to what is socially acceptable, Dave has benefited greatly from free speech. He has gained hundreds of millions of dollars and diehard fans around the world, so it's only fair if his opposition can also speak up and voice their opinions and disagreements with his performances. All attempts to silence Dave have been proven unsuccessful because no matter what, he will always get right back on that stage and speak his mind. Oof, oof. That video was from Patrick CC, bro. Patrick CC.